Keeps taking the time over this fourth pick here. Radiance pick. Sand. Ooh. Sand King is quite possibly, quite possibly. I say this with absolutely no hyperbole. Maybe a little hyperbole. Quite possibly the worst hero in the game. Ten at the minute. To go. Five seconds. Like his ultimate sucks. Dyer's ban. He's alright at doing a little bit of disrupting. Um with the 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 Burrow Strike and the Sandstorm. But I mean as a hero Yikes. Ten seconds to go. Five seconds. Um Radiance Ban. Okay, but on the Quid Opponent, it's good burst damage. We've seen him picked up or ban pretty much every match today, I do believe, Quinnipin. What's the final ban from Vikings? What do they... I mean, it all depends on whether they think this Bristleback is going to be the pause one. Ten seconds to go. Or... Five seconds. Is it going to be the pause three? You would have thought with the Sand King, Witch Doctor and Winter Wyvern, the Sand King's going to be like the off laner. Bristleback in the safe lane, just looking for the mid. So, I mean, they can take the time to think. Oh, no, Shadow Fiend. Okay. Dyer's pick. Necrophos. Huh. Like, sure. It's. It's burst. Um, there's a lot of physical damage coming out on the Ten side of Nemiga. On Namiga. Namiga? Namiga? Five seconds. But. Yes. Let's see. Uh, the ticking down the clock. They need themselves a mid laner. And who's it gonna be? Sorry, after five games already, my brain's a little bit fried. Five games in a row. Um, Okay, so Boom is going to be playing the Necrofoss in the mid lane. We've got Aramis playing the Pos four, Toby on the Bat Rider on the three, Shad playing the position one Lycan, and just waiting for Salary once again to pick up his Grimstroke. Meanwhile, Mellow Jewel, excuse me, wants to play on the Bristle back, Astral on the Winter Wyvern. We've got Fervion on the Witch Doctor, Nefrit picking up the Faceless Void, and the Chosen One. On the Sand King. It's a big old melee core Ten lineup. To go. Which. Yeah, it's. You've still got to be coming into a Necrophos with those Death Pulses, the Heartstopper over there as well. You're going to be grouping up here for an Earthyaker's Echo. Once he gets that blink, that's going to be extremely effective on the three cores. Uh, salary, it means it's going to be easy to get these. Yeah, the soul binds off. I 
I don't know about this, Nemiga. I genuinely do not know. But, however, I am just the caster. They are the players. There was a reason that I am here and they are there. And let's see what they're going to be able to do with this. Obviously, after we get ourselves through the reserve time. Game number one of Vikings versus Namiga. Better get ready. Who do you guys, you know, chat? I want to hear your opinions. Vikings lineup or the Namiga lineup? And yes, I see the I see the joke. This is Namiga, not Nigma. Or Namiga, whichever way you want to pronounce it. Let's see how this goes though, because there's going to be four heroes bot. Stacking up maybe. Shad isn't too first. Toby. He's got the sticky napalm, so he's going straight for that sticky napalm level one. He wants to be harassed and wants to be really disrupting the Faceless Void's gameplay, so it is going to be safe lane faceless mid lane bristle then kind of deep they're going in toward this and here we go what are you doing like Salary's down here now as well. The Stroke of Fate comes out. Death Pulse being used. Melodule, he does have the uh, the Quills. He's got back up here from Astral now as well, so he's going to be able to solve up. The right click actually cancels the solve. He's going to try and turn this one around. He's going to try and get aggressive. It looks like he will try and get aggressive onto Salary. Salary, these Quill stacks are stacking up. Yeah, yeah sure, whatever. Stroke of Fate comes through. So Melodule, the tip's going to be there. <laughs> Quill stacks are wearing off. Okay, they do have this ward. But he's being trapped in. The supports are just going to deal with him. So he has two last hits. There's half a creep wave. All right. And I suppose Shad's in a little bit of danger. There's nothing for that cast to really bounce to. There was one creep. It was in range. Now the Fisher comes through again. Stroke of Fate. Salary. Toast the first droplets. And the torrents to come. Oh, Alright, you giant edgelord. But yeah, while well, this is going on, Boom has level 2, he's nearly level 3. Melodule is barely close to level 2. Toby's going to get reinforcements now as well. So yeah, I hope it was worth it, Bristleback. Aramis might come in. Does he throw the Fisher out here to throw the blocks? Oh, just trade the harass. And Bristle has to come up against the Necro. What the? What, what are you? I'm gonna watch. I'm just gonna watch the Bristle. Because they had final pick, right? If I'm rem remembering correctly, they had final pick, and they chose to go with the faceless void to put it in the safe lane. They didn't want to put the Bristol in the safe lane for whatever reason. Um. So this is what they're being reduced to. Melodule just popping a clarity. Yep, 
Aramis is back down here now. He's going to be able to mess with Melodule just a little bit. Fisher comes through. It keeps him stunned up. The Quilt Sprays will stack on Earthshaker, so he does need to be careful, especially now that Melodule has that level 2. He's going to be able to get himself a couple of waves as well. The Courier does get pretty low. One more Quill stack would have been able to do it. Um, and Aramis, yeah. Denied. He's just playing around with his life, going for the denies, and one more, two more quill sprays, two more quill sprays. It'd have to have been two. But I genuinely do not think boom occurs here. Yeah, he has to be careful of the courier for, what, another quarter of a level? <laughs> Block comes out, Melodule. He's got no way to get through this tree. So there's going to be an Inkswell. There's going to be a Stroke of Fate. Is he going to be able to get the Quill Spray off? One more right click. It might be enough. No, Aramis still survives. The Courier gets out. Boom is now going to be hitting level 5 off this Creep Wave. In fact, he pulls it into the neutrals now as well. Shad will die. Without his support, Shad will die. Top lane, how's Toby doing? Well, there's going to be a TP up here now as well. Astral, he's going to be hit by the tower, but it's not going to be efficient to block him or stun him up to take a, any more tower hits. No, 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 no. I... Dyer's mid tower could use a little help. Invisibility. And boom with the Imbus. He's close to six. Ah, he just picks it up to make sure the bristle couldn't pick it up, I guess. Bottom lane, how's Fairview doing? He's got himself a kill, which you usually expect from a Witch Doctor, especially when that Maledict starts getting up in levels. Uh, Toby's going to be slowed down, harassed out here by Astral. He's going to be chased by creeps. Is he going to try and do... I guess he just double stacks, pops a Firefly, and then gets himself out for dear life. mid towers having technical difficulties. Radiant structures must have been fortified. Toby, the knives are going to be coming through, but it looks like he's going to get himself the the two creep waves. Meanwhile, Reaper's side is going to be popped. Your flesh. Zero, three, and zero. Well, Radiant's mid towers coming feet. apart. Shad's only level four because he keeps having his supports um, put away, but he's going to be able to get. Is this going to be three? Best do something about that bottom tower. It looks like it's going to be two for two. Yeah, couldn't get there in time, Bart Rider. So just a two for two in terms of runes. Trouble brewing at Radiant's bottom tower. Bottom lane, chosen one. He's got one point into the caustic finale, which I guess is going to be hurtful to the lichen. Mid lane, there's going to be the TP in, Furbian, but Cask actually bounces a couple of times here. And <laughs> Necrophos says, you know what? I don't care. Shad gets a kill. Top lane, though, they're going to be able to get a return kill onto Toby. And Shad, how's he doing? He's going to go for the Helm of the Dominator, so he's got one more creep kill before he's going to be able to pick that one up. There it is, he gets the gold. And Aramis... He's got himself regen boots. Uh, two assists. Grimstroke has two kills on this. Yeah, 2 0 2. Like, he's been involved in every single kill in this game so far for his side. Okay, Astral. He's... I don't know what. Like, Bristle is going to go for it again. Does Bristle know the definition of insanity? Dyer's mid tower could use a little help. Because net worth wise, it's not great. Death wise, it's not Dyer's great. Mid -tower. Fisher comes out. He's going to be blocked in the Inkswell now as well, just to catch up. It looks like it's going to be a little bit out of range, but the Enchant Totem, Melodule's just trying to turn his back. Reaper Scythe. 
Radiant mid towers getting back. Finishes up. the job and Necro just goes straight back to the to the mid lane. And the Heartstopper regen, the permanent Heartstopper aura. It just makes it so hard for Bristol to be here. Okay, there's three points into the region. Toby's even shifted late. They, they don't even care about uh, Nefret. They just like pff, let him farm. Oh, there's gonna be the Inkswell onto the Centaur. Fervian was slowed down. Chad's no work. He does have the shape shift if he wants to pop it, and he's getting close to the Necros now as well. Much grace to you. So he looks like he's just gonna jungle. Give the lane up to Toby so Toby can get some quick farm. He's half a level away from level six. Boom has a haste. Boom's gonna find Astral and probably do a lot of damage here now as well. Aramis is coming in. It's only level three, so there's not gonna be a Call Embrace or a Winter's Curse. Oh, Shapeshift even being used. You want to chase this one down. And Shad just comes straight past that tier 1 tower. There's going to be the stomp from the center now as well. One more right click and they are going to be able to kick it. Shad secures that kill. How far off the, the Reaper Scythe? I wonder if they're even going to need this. Nefret's going to come down. If they get a Chronosphere out, they might be able to take down Boom. Chronosphere's going to be there now. Stacking up these Quills. It will be. No, the Fisher comes through. No, go Shroud. The Death Pulse will heal him, but keep him alive, but not for too long. And now the Boros Strike onto Earthshaker. This is going to be a good turnaround here for the side of uh, Namiga. All the while though, Toby gets his level 6. This is not your side of the map. Okay, Inkswell on the centaur. It's gonna latch now and then he's gonna be stomped up, stunned up, killed off and shipped away. Seriously, I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of the match, Nemega reporting for feeding. Burrow Strike's gonna be there, the level 7 on the Sand King. No ultimate picked up, he's gonna be stunned there. There's gonna be the reveal. I'll dig that. And Boom gets the kill. By the acres. Toby, though. Poor Toby. Galaxies unseen. Just what the doctor ordered. Shad, how's he doing? Shad's doing pretty good. Shad is 400 gold away. 400-ish. Away from level 1 Necros. Uh, Faceless Void. What's coming out? Is this his Mask of Madness? It is! Radiant's bottom tower ain't a pretty sight right now. Okay. It's not bad in fights, but as long as you don't need to get like your time dilation off. You can time walk in, time dilation, chrono, and then that's you done. Uh, pop the Mask of Madness and just look for the fights. Chosen one. Yeah, no epicenter. Probably won't pick that up, actually, for another couple of levels. Maybe around level 10. You've just got to think, the mana cost, it's 150 mana. It does 110 at level 1. Six pulses at 110. The movement slows there as well as the attack slow, but with... People building mobility with four staffs, blink daggers. If you can blink up before that first pulse, um, it's just really easy to escape from. To be honest, Dyer's top tower is getting beat down. The Dyer might want to mine their top tower. Aramis getting close to, um, was about a third of the way to a blink. Whether they give him this lane to farm, or whether they want Toby to pick it up, because I assume Toby is actually going to go for the pipe first. Boots of travel may be being queued up, because he's not got anything queued up for his boots of speed afterwards. Um, it wouldn't surprise me. Oh, yeah. Creeps are going to burn down. To see Toby go for the blink first, or oh, there's going to be the TP in the chronosphere comes out, but now... 
He's already got himself a point into the Ghost Shroud as well. The Ink Swell, the Soulbind comes through. Reaper Scythe onto both of them, but the Time Walk is going to get Nefrit back to pretty much full health as the Witch Doctor will be killed off. And now the reveal, Echo Slam. Chosen one. He was chosen to die and nothing more. The Dyer couldn't hang on to that mid tower. Nefrit, he did get a good Time Walk off. That got him back to pretty much full health. Ooh, time dilation comes through. Inkswell, though, is he going to stay for the stun? It looks like he's going to maybe turn around and boom comes back in. Winter's Curse. Do they have the damage? Well, with that Splinter Blast, they do. And now Boom needs to get himself away. He's going to be bashed. How long off that Ghost Shard? He's going to try and use it. The uh, doesn't need it. Fisher comes through. Yeah, and he just gets the heal off. Now, Flame Break comes through. There's going to be the lasso back onto Furvy in the chase with the Centaur. Shad gets it with his Wolves. The Necros. Uh, what level Necros? If he wants another level in the Necro book, he could go for it. The Burrow Strike does come through onto the Bat Rider. Bat Rider will fall. Chosen was does get that kill. Yeah, so 13 minutes in. Helm of the Dominator on a level 2 Necro book here. Shad is having a great time. Dyer's mid tower won't last much longer. Celery, just doing a little bit of... Oh, he's got to go for the D-Ward, right? Maybe? Is this a bait? They have the vision to see now for it. They're not going to go for it, though. Just going to put pressure onto this. This this bottom lane. There's Winter Ivan. It's going to go for an Orchid. Which I get, but... I, I suppose there's a position for you can do... Um, again, the, the amount of gold he gets to support has been reduced, but Astral is just like, he's getting lane like this, he's getting, he's getting space in lanes, he's getting space in jungles from time to time, he's got, he, well he's 1-1-1, one, 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 so he's got to kill and an assist. So as long as he's given space, he should be able to get this pretty quickly. Chosen one does have the epicenter around level 10. That's what I thought it was going to come out. Aramis, though, does have the dust reveal. There's going to be a Burrow Strike through now as well. It looks like the Lycan wants to go for the Shapeshift. Furbian's going to go for the cask. Epicenter's being channeled now, but the Echo Slam comes out. That channel time is just a waste of time. More like... A Shad gets himself a double. And then back in the jungle to farm. Seen better days. The Radiant's courier didn't make it. That's for me. Melodiol gets the kill onto Celery's courier. Toby. Radiant's what are you doing there, bud? Pretty sad right now. How far off? Yeah, it is going to be the Blink Dagger. He's only about 200 gold away from finishing that too. So Radiant Boom will be casked up. Witch Doctor, just trying to delay the push onto the mid lane. 15 and a half minutes in, or 16 minutes in, sorry. It's 13 to 8. Nemiga aren't looking too bad. But those six feeds or something like that on the Bristleback in the first 15 minutes of the game, five feeds. Yeah, it's he, he's got himself the, the Vanguard now. That's going to really improve his survivability, but like, he, there was just no need for him to... There was just no need. Faceless Void's not doing too bad, though. He's got the top net worth in the game. Uh, Vampire Fang's going to be great, especially with the attack speed of the Maelstrom and the Mask of Madness. You know, really going to boost the um, the lifesteal here for the Faceless Void. Going to go straight for a BKB. All right, carry on. Good for me. 
So Nefra, uh, how far off the blink is he? He's got the blink gold if he wants to buy it here. Uh, Shekhar looks like he's just gonna, yeah, gonna buy it, TP back. Do they have any vision? They have the outpost, but they don't have any major vision. Dyer's top tower, you know the drill. Toby's got the lasso though. Breaking through the Dyer's structures for now. Looks like he might just use himself, well, it's not really bait because the rest of his team aren't here, so the Winter's Curse is going to come out. Are they going to go for it? Time Dilation is going to be there now as well. Lasso, I... More like a last no. He might actually be able to keep the, the Lifestealer locked up. Sorry, Lifestealer? Faceless Void locked down. The Lifesteal not being effective is what I meant to say. They're going to be able to get one. Can they get two? They're going to be able to get two. Chosen one blinked himself out with the epicenter. Is there anything to follow? No blink for a few seconds and no Fisher. Yeah, he's out. He is out of there. Radiance mid towers getting banged up. Reaper Scythe was used. It is level two now. So the added respawn time is another twenty-five seconds. As long as it's that's what kills him, you know. And boom. Yeah, he's still farming. He's got himself the, the Guardian's Greaves, which is going to benefit greatly from the Ghost Shroud. And the heals on the Death Pulse as well. It looks like they might be able to find a Chosen One. The Wolves might find him here. I think they do. I think they have the vision every so often. They just get it. The wolves come around the other way. Is there going to be a boulder toss? There will be. The boulder strike comes through. He's going to be flame broke back as well. Revealed by the dust. The fisher comes through. Inks well. Now Chosen One. It's just not your day, is it, buddy? It's going to take a long time to kill him off. He goes for the bow strike. He is dead. The tower looking to finish his job. Celery actually gets it with a stroke of fate. And Necrophos going for a Radiance. Faceless Void still working on the BKB. How's that Orchid coming? It's close. Only needs about another 300 gold. So this is really good for Astral, actually. It's going to be really good when these Winter's Curses stop get, start getting dropped. You know the drill. Oh, speaking about getting dropped. Maladule, you might be wrong place, wrong time here, buddy. That skull, though, that's a pretty slow skull. Are they going to try and turn on this now as well? The Inkswell comes through, boom. He got cast up. But while this is going on, Shad's just pushing out with his army of creeps. Dyer's top tower. You know the drill. Dyer's got one last top tower. Radiant's bottom tower seen better days. Toby Dyer's and Aramis. Toby, is he going towards the boots of trouble? Uh, anything coming out on the career? Trouble oh, okay, pipe. Yeah, he has tower. been building that for quite a while. Um, completely slipped my mind. Could use a little help. That he wanted the pipe. Shad, level 3 Necrobox, gonna go for an AC now, as well as Helm of the Dom. No boots, though. Trouble brewing at Radiant's bottom tower. <laughs> like, I guess, you've you've got the shapeshift every 110 seconds. Um, so if you really need to get in or get out, you can pop that and run yourself away. It's just a funny one. Being 20 minutes in with no boots is the carry. Chosen one, could to try and use a sandstorm, but there is still a catapult here now as well. The mech or guardian screed being popped just to keep the creeps alive a little bit longer. Radiance toughened up their structures. Chosen one, what's he gonna do here? Looks like he wants to build a spirit vessel to help mess with uh, Boom's region. This tier two tower though, is he gonna try and go for the deny? He he looks like he was teasing it now as well. Melodule going to be slowed down. The Flame Break pushes him back right into a lasso now as well. Inkswell being coming out. Phantom being thrown out here. Stroke of Fate. Everything. Down for 76 seconds. Thanks to that. Still only level 2. On the Reaper's Scythe. I love that as well. The little Necro 3. On Shad. 
Radiant's bottom tower. So they're trying to trade right now. and put pressure onto this tier 3 tower bot, but nobody apart from Faceless Void really on the side of Nemegut takes towers. Radiant's bottom tower seems So Toby's going to TP back. Yeah, he's gone for the Blink Dagger. He's going to go for the Blink Dagger and not the Boots of Travel. He might get Boots of Travel a little bit later. As Fervian being hunted down, the Phantom to silence now as well. Inkswell comes out, Flame Break pushes him into the creeps in the neutral stack, and they should just be a kill. I think Boom gets it with the Heartstop Aurora. And how close? About 1200 gold away from being able to pick up the full Radiance here on the Necrophos. Are they going to be able to find out Nefret? Do you see him with the the observer? There's not going to be any follow up though. Just boom. Just going to be able to clean these creeps up. Yeah, no big deal. Toby needs to run away. There is not an army, but a decent force behind him. He does not need to be there. If he got burrow struck, he probably would have been in a little bit of danger. The ward sees. Fisher comes through. What's going to be there now as well? The blink into the enchant totem. Toby's got that lasso. Inkswell's going to be there. Crimson Guard going to be popped, but Bristleback being dragged back just right into Necrophos is coming. Oh, Melodule is going to be the sprint coming through from Shad as well. Is he going to be able to get the right clicks? The Reaper Scythe, it's not going to be enough damage, but it looks like they are going to be able to finish off the Bristleback just in the end. Maybe they need to wait a couple of seconds. Just look at Shad. Holy crap, these right clicks. Didn't make it. And they've got creeps now as well. The Necrobox are up. They're only about two thirds of the way through. 23 minutes in. Chosen One's going to come in with the Sandstorm. There's another creep wave though. Do they have a reveal? As the Radiance is being flown out here for Boom. Winter's Curse, there's going to be a, it's a decent amount of damage. And with the Orchid there as well, they should be able to claim the kill. But it's just going to be the Aegis. Chronosphere comes through. Maybe a Fisher too. Well, the BKB is there, so the Fisher won't work. And now they are going to be able to get the kill onto Necrophos. Maybe coming a little bit too forward. Grimstroke as well. He's got an Inkswell available if he wants to throw it out, but just won't. He did get the Radiance before he died. This is the fight that Nemega needed. They get themselves three, they don't lose any. And it stops the pressure onto this tier 3 tower in the mid lane as well. 403 health. Here in the cask bounce. That's just something uh, to creeps. Ooh, Lycan. Does have the shapeshift though, the rest of his team that are alive can come and back him up. Looks like they might just want to get out. I wouldn't be surprised. They find the reveal onto the Sun King. Are they going to try and chase him down? Shad, he's just going back and forth in this Lycan. I think you need to just back away from this here now. Got the Echo Slam available if anybody gets too close. Another Fisher. How far off is the Blink? Well, with that Spirit Vessel, it's going to be so far off that he's not going to be able to use it. The Refresh. Celery now with an Inkswell. It looks like he's going to be killed off, though. Is that Inkswell going to pop first? It looks like they are going to be able to keep the Bristle back at bay. Now Reaper Scythe, they take down the Witch Doctor. Another Fisher. Again, just waiting. The Blink's available if you think it's time. Burrow Strike comes through, the Echo Slam's going to be the chosen one, but it's going to be another Great Winter's Curse now as well. Necrophos, is he going to be able to survive through this? It is going to wear off eventually though, boom, does he be able to keep himself alive? He won't be able to, chosen one does get taken down by Shad. And now the chase is on onto Melodule, Shad though, again, no boots. Not even brown boots. They get the kill onto Astral. Melodule slowed down by the sticky napalms. It looks like uh, Toby's in range and he's going to be able to keep stacking these up. The buyback comes through from who? Witch Doctor now as well. Toby the Fisher. Well, it's going to keep him flame break back now as well. And it looks like Bristleback will tick down. Faceless Void is going to be able to get himself a time walk away. How far off? Still about 23 seconds from the shapeshift. Just buys out the AC though. Really nice for the Lycan here. Who may... Did he? Has he just forgotten he's not got boots? I guess he's got the 
quicker than Charm, which makes this a little bit faster. 72 seconds though, and it's only up for 22. So that's 50 seconds without full move speed. I suppose it's working out for him. That's fine. Faceless starting to not dip behind. Oh no, I suppose dip behind. He's about a thousand gold here behind the Lycan. And 1500 behind the Necrophos. Boom, I'm gonna go Shiva's. Radiance is nice. Oh, this actually might be quite nice for him too. Does he swap out for it? No, he's just gonna send it back. Maybe give it to Batrider? Let's take a look at the neutral items. There is a scan. They've found Chosen One. They might be able to get a good Chronosphere off here. Look at the grouping. They try to run away from it. It looks like they are going to be able to take down Chosen One. At least Shad does get the kill on that because he was on the edge. Now the lasso is going to be used. The buyback comes through from Earthshaker. They want to try and go for this. The TP It's going to be a long one, but he does have the Echo Slam if he wants to go back and use it. He's waiting for that blink. He's waiting for anything. He's just waiting. Fisher comes through. They're going to be able to find at least the Witch Doctor. Now and look at the Wolves. The right clicks to take down the Witch Doctor. And Aramis... Lincoln 6, Couriers to follow. Oh, I'm hearing a Winter's Curse. Onto the Bat Rider, it might. It's not going to be enough. Guardian Screams are there, and Toby's just going to be fine with his Essence Ring. Uh, Mello gets himself a haste in the bottle. I genuinely do not think Vikings could. They're just going to wait for the fortification to wear off. The next creep wave to push in. This tier 2 tower, it's about halfway down. Quicken and Charm comes up, extra regen and more cooldown on the Reaper's Scythe. What is the cooldown on that now? Every 104 seconds. Chase is on, what are they going to be able to do? Astral needs to come back. No breaking down the radiant structures like this. But the Sea Maladule as well as Nefret. They both have TPs. Are they going to try and make the way over? Maybe Aramis goes for the outpost. Yeah, it looks like that's what he's going to be doing. There's four heroes on the side of Nemega. They do group up Bristleback. He's still looking to... He crumbles the tier 1 tower. and Now he's going to go for the TP. And Roshan, 49 seconds before it's back up. Dyer's mid tower could use a little help. Somebody iced the Dyer's courier. Bounty. Ooh, chosen one's going to be able to get the Burrow Strike off. Lycan, is there going to be a Chronosphere? It's not going to be for the next seven seconds now as well. Lycan's going to go for a run, but he's going to be stunned up here now as well from that cast bounce. They do get both outposts, which is nice. But that was a good fight. Oh, uh, just a good pick-off here. They're going to go for another smoke. Chronosphere was held. All the ultimates are up on the side of Nemega. Faceless leads the way. He leads the train. He has the Chronosphere. Looks like they might not catch anyone. Roshan is up, though. So they go straight into the pit. And I guess the I suppose without the Lycan, um, they don't want to really risk a team fight here. It flies in the courier, gets himself out. But Nefret now has himself the Aegis. Uh, 
How's Bristleback doing? He started to recover in terms of net worth. You know, he... It was such a horrible start for him. It looks like he wants a nullifier first before he gets the Satanic. A Melodule. He's he's got himself the cheese. He's picked up the vampire fangs. The spell life steals nice, especially on top with the quill spray. Uh, the BKB, it's a fresh one. That's why I've been doing. Pick up a shadow blade. Oh, that's real nice. Fervian, go scepter. Yeah, he's been right clicked down by the lichen three or four times. So he's just like, you know what, let's just make it so he can't right-click me. Celery, trying to do a little bit of... I mean, he's got the wards to come out. You can do a little bit of D-Ward in here. Toby. Just goes to the blink away. He's got his TP. Mid -tower could use a hand. He, is he going to get another wave out? He's not going to get another wave out of this, even with a flame break. Yeah, he just needs to TP himself out before Winter's Curse. Well, Toby. Toby, 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 Toby. You are dead, my friend. Just pushed it a little bit too far. Got a little bit greedy. Radiance mid towers coming apart. Dynamica have the power spike here. Twenty six to sixteen. But Viking, I suppose they do with the Aegis. A nullifier. Uh is he Oh, he's changed his mind. Gonna go for a basher. I was gonna say is Bristol gonna go for a nullifier too, but Whoa, quick now. Aramis Uh Lotus Orb coming up from him. Into a shadow blade. Necrophos. It's gonna go for a heart. In their top tower. It, yeah, I suppose it makes him harder to kill. He already has a lot of regen. He doesn't really need to build more regen. Just having the pure HP to to withstand pretty much everything. Um, it's as well as the regen, obviously from. Uh, okay, so regen yes from the heart, but just the raw stats that it gives, the raw survivability. It's gonna be way better for Boom. He can then just look to back himself out of a fight and then straight back in. The Wolves, they see Nefrit, but they're going to be spotted out now. Aramis. Oh, the pause. Let's see. Does he go for the blink? Do they have the vision? They see Fervian at least. If he blinks echoes onto Fervian, or even Fishers, if he if he just blinks, he's gonna see at least two heroes. Yes, Winter Wyvern is Invis, and she's got the Winter's Curse, so it's gonna be risky. It is going to be risky. Did he just try and go for Nefret here? Bristleback's away for runes. The closest thing he can TP to is the outpost. Does he have a TP? Yeah, he has a TP. So the closest thing he can TP to is the outpost. It's going to take him six seconds to TP to here. And at the time, it's going to take him to get into the fight as well. He's looking at a good 10, 12 seconds. So we're going to get a go. All right. No, we're not.
I'm waiting for this. Yeah, the circle has been drawn. Um, there is a chronosphere up. It's an Aegis on the faceless void as well. So this, if they're going to take this fight, I mean, you look at Lycan. Has he got the shape shift? He does. Um, going to go for an abyssal blade. He's already got the basher, which is going to be quite nice. Let's take a quick look at the uh, at the items. So Nefret as well. The magic resist and the status resist is going to pay off great with his Titan Sliver. It's probably one of the best items the, the Faceless Void can get. It means he's always going to have a better chance of getting off the, the time walk and getting a health reset, getting back into fights. Uh, Shad with the Orb of Destruction. The slow is nice, the armor reduction is better. Aramis. I suppose he doesn't really need the attack damage. He's not. I mean, well, Enchant Totem. You want for your attack damage, you know, he could be... Ocean Heart wouldn't be bad, plus the plus five stats. But I suppose he wants the money. Um, at some point, everybody will be ready to start this game again. Chosen one. The spirit vessel is nice, but it's only got two charges. Okay, let's see what Earth Shaker does. Because they have the vision. He's going to go around the other way. He kills off the courier, which is wards. And I guess everybody else just backs away, plays it safe. Salary glimmers, but he's bottom of the net worth. The glimmers good for survivability, which doctor as well with the, the ghost scepter. Um It's a bit of a double edged sword here because if you get too close to the to the Necrophos, you're gonna take way much way more damage from things like the, the Death Pulse. Heart Aurora is magical as well. And then Reaper Scythe, forget about it. Oh, it just is gone. Radiance top towers hurting. DD has been spotted. Where's the lichen? Lichen's not there, so Nakafos is gonna. Towers in bad shape. Does he take it? He takes it. Damn it. Radiant Toby's gonna come in there's gonna be the lasso with the ink spell now as well They find the pick onto the witch doctor Shiva's got gonna be pop witch doctor is he gonna actually gonna go down he will Toby gets the kill now Santos Stump comes out but there's gonna be a great chronosphere so that's the lichen dead the lichen does have the buyback reaper side comes out it actually finishes off astral now as well so there's not gonna be a winter's curse and now boom is he gonna be able to get himself away he does have the guardian's grief he's gonna be popping those as well a couple of more seconds to the death pulses up and now well he ticks down Noah Jewel does get it Death Ward onto Celery. He gets bashed and stunned by Nefret. They might be able to take down Chosen One, the Enchant Totem. Yeah. It's going to be the tower that finishes the job. So a three for two. I think. Did Witch Doctor. I think Witch Doctor buy, bought back. I mean, he definitely did because he got killed. So that was a three for three and a buyback on the Witch Doctor. Radiant's mid tower's getting banged up. They are going to give up a tier 2 tower for this, but look at this. Double catapult wave, the fortification comes through as well, so this lane's going to push in a little bit further. I, I know it's for the tier 3. Melodule is fairly far forward, he does have a cheese though. Catapults. It's not going to be a full tower wipe, uh, but with these catapults here, it should be a decent amount. Aramis, oh, the, the Fisher was being, it was being primed. 
Looks like he might still go for it. He's got the blink. That's going to be the lasso as well. The four star forward. Aramis will actually went for the fisher, but it's going to be off the mark. BKB popped by Melodule. Anything to cancel this? There's going to be nothing. No, he gets bashed. I forgot Shad got the basher. He gets bashed. That TP cancelled now, and he will be killed off. Celery gets it with a stroke of fate. Tiny stroke in my masterpiece. Regeneration. Boom. It's... I mean, his farm slowed down to the point where Fitz's Void has been able to jump over him with a full Melania, as well as the Nullifier. Uh, BKB down to six seconds. And he's still going for the Satanic. He still wants that Satanic pickup. Just to try and, I guess, make him a little bit unkillable. Going for the 25% backtrack there as well. Actually, let's take a look at the hero levels. 17, 23, 21, 22, 20, 16, 23, 20, 18, 25. So, Neferit got a lot from getting these 6 kills in the 10 assists. And he, you know, that XP really started to swing his way. Roche, 2 minutes 13 seconds before Roche is back up. Nope. I'm hearing a Boros Strike. Toby tried to come in. It looks like Toby's just going to be killed off. Soulbind's going to be there though. Into two heroes. Do they want to carry on? It looks like they're just going to back away. So Soulbind was used, but that's up every, what, 50 seconds? Yeah, every 50 seconds. Lycan. How far off the Abyssal Blade is he? He's about another 600 gold. Coin. As I say that, the bounties come up, so that really does go up. He's about 300 gold away from being able to pick that up. Still no boots. Sorry. Well, they're going to find him out now as well. Nullifier comes through. Sorry's just... He, he's dead. There's no way out of that for him. Bristle back again, still building towards the Abyssal. But let me tell you, once Bristle back evolves into a Bristle back, that's going to be a lot harder to fight against because he, he's not going to be kited as easy. He's got the BKB, so he's not really kited as much now as well. Roshan, it's still 40 seconds before he's back up. <laughs> he's going to be able to get the TP as well. Um, but the stack around the Roshan pit. They've got 20 seconds till Grimstruck's back up. About the time it's going to take Roshan to respawn. Did they just go for the tier 2 here? It looks like they might do. Radiance top towers taking the a Radiant lost the top tower. Necrophos wants all the strength. Look at this. He's got the, the Minotaur horn, which is like a... It's a baby BKB, but it gives you the plus 20 strength. Dyer's mid tower won't last much longer. In fact, let's take a look at the neutral items. I know we're about to engage. Havoc Hammer as well. That's like 18 strength. Um, I don't know who you'd take that on. And then the Magic Lamp here for the the, the Witch Doctor. Ooh, the chasing down. It looks like... Is he going to be able to get himself away here, Aramis? Using the Blink Dagger and the Shadow Blade. Do they have the reveal? The Burrow Strike comes through. I think he was in range now. What's he got? Radiant Just a Shadow Blade to run himself away. Bristleback being spotted by the Centaurs. Toby, is he going to go for the Dragback? He's just going to force staff himself out. Play it safe. Radiant top tower and it looks like they might just reset here. Yeah. They block with the Fisher. 
and even boom. Oh, Chronosphere is going to be there though. He's so tanky now. Just look at this Necrophos Spirit Vessel. This might actually be the, the game changer here now as well. He's going to be stunned up and killed off. 95 seconds without him though. Back lines. Toby, is he going to be killed off by the Lycan? No, he's going to be able to pop that Essence Ring now as well. And the gun... Decent Echo Slam buyback here from the Necrophos. Witch Doctor's dead. Lycan... He needs to get himself up because that shapeshift is going to be wearing off though. Melodule comes through. Shiva's guard is he going to be slowed down. It looks like he's going to be bashed up now as well. The Phantom Reaper Scythe but he's going to be able to eat that cheese and get himself up back up to full health. Will be killed off eventually it looks like. Oh will he because the epicenter it's going to be channeled as well as that cold embrace. Melodule going to be silenced now as well. It looks like Toby wants to do what he can with the lasso. Who's going to be able to claim he can the the faceless void here now as well. Toby though getting pretty darn low. Can he kill off the chosen one? Chosen one's going to take down cold embrace but that means the Phantom is just going to proc. Doing the damage and will be taking down Salary. Oh, Faceless Void. That is not where you needed to go. The buybacks come through from pretty much everybody. Toby's going to get himself back into the fight now as well. TP's himself and Boom has already bought back. If he goes down, this is going to be good night Necro. The stuns come through. They're trying to keep him alive. Boom, the Boros Strike's going to be there though. Again, this Spirit Vessel, it will tick him down. So 125 seconds now without Boom. Fisher comes through. Aramis. Gem on the deck. Radiance bottom towers done for. Get a load of Radiance bottom rags. Yeah, and just into the Roshan pit. Um, I don't think there's much they can do here, Vikings. Celery just needs to defend. So yeah. Never takes Roshan. Uh, is it the third? It is. He gets himself a refresh here now as well. Chronosphere is 38 seconds off. And with the Satanic up, the BKP down to 5 seconds, that doesn't really matter too much. You've still got 60 seconds without a Necro. You know he died back in that last fight. The wolves have been revealed. They're going to try the best to just delay these creeps, I think. Oh, going after the courier. Yeah, just just like this. Just hit, pull back, hit, pull back, hit, pull back. Repair kit is going to be used, but just look how fast they're getting through this, even with the repair kit. Again, 30 seconds without the Necrophos. There's going to be the flame break. And this tier 3 tower, even with the repair kit on it, will be taken down. In fact, this should be at least a melee rax. Just look at how fast Nefra and how hard he's hitting here. Necro is coming back up. They need to be careful because there's no buybacks available. So if they get caught up by a lasso, it could be over for them. Oh, Minotaur Horn here for Bristleback here now as well. So that's at least, what's that? It's nine seconds, but it's going to be at least seven seconds. Toby's going to come in. He gets the lasso off. Do they have the reveal on the Winter Wyvern, though? It's going to be a good Chronosphere onto two of them. It blocks Toby's path back. Oh, Astral's still getting pretty down low. Shadow comes in with the Abyssal Blade now as well. It's going to be, is that going to be another kill onto the Necrophos? Boom goes down. They are going to be able to find that kill onto the Witch Doctor. Witch Doctor buys back. Refreshing comes through. That's going to be the second Chronosphere. And they might be able to clear off Toby, though. Echo Slam on the back lines onto two. Shot again. His move speed's gonna go bye bye because he still doesn't have boots, and that's gonna be the lichen form down on the shape shift. You know the drill. It's gonna cost them a buyback on the the witch doctor as well as the winter wyvern. The die best do something about that bottom. What's tower? the cooldown on that? Forty seconds. So it's about about thirty seconds quicker. Racks. The than the BKB. So if you need it in a pinch, this Minotaur Horn's gonna be coming in handy. Radiant bottom rags. Ain't no longer with the Radiant's bottom rags. Didn't no make it. Mind if I do. But they get whew, that range rax. That is a one tap away from being taken down. I'm not sure what Batrider's doing here. Yeah, Batrider, there's no shop there anymore, mate. Just leave. Get out, Vamus. 
chosen. If he'd have borrow struck, he might actually have just been able to get straight on top of that. I mean, he doesn't know. That would have been some proper Spidey Sense shit, but... Bristleback's got himself the Moonshard now as well. Another cheese. <laughs> I think he regens enough mana that if he just keeps walking around with his Quill Spray... I wonder who takes this, because minus 400 mana is a big deal. Maybe give it to the Winter Wyvern. Of Havukama, I'm here in the last. Oh, it's just an illusion. Oh, it's a tanky illusion. Do you still throw out spells for it? That's a little embarrassing. I thought, like, have they caught the Faceless Void here or something? Necro, how long have I been talking about him getting this heart now? It must be a good 15 minutes at least. Did anyone take the Havoc Hammer? Maybe flying in? Alright, it's going to be the, the magic lamp here. It looks like for the Sun King, yes, no. It is the heart, yeah, okay, it is. It's gonna be the, the magic lamp. All right, carry on. It feels like ages ago. It feels like another match where I was talking about this bristle back. Just feeding away his, his life. I genuinely thought it's gonna be oh Bristleback's gonna be ineffective. It's gonna be like a twenty five minute game. It's it's over. They've got they've not got a mid laner. But he has turned it around. Nearly four K health. Three point seven K health. Okay, that's Aegis. And Heart for Chosen One here now as well. How much health does he have at the minute? 3.4. Let's see what he gets once his Heart comes in. <laughs> as foretold. Toby with the TP. Oh, I tell you who's not got a TP now. It's going to be Celery though. Grimstroke. It's going to be a good Lotus. It looks like they are going to be able to get that Soul Bind off now as well. The Binds, but just everybody on the side of Nemiga is so tanky. They find themselves three. It looks like they're going to be able to get a return kill onto the Winter Wyvern. Chad is caught behind enemy lines. So Chosen One is going to try and maybe turn this one around with the Bottle Strike because he's taking a whole load of damage. I'm hearing a Death Ward. No, the Reaper side comes out. It's not going to be able to kill off anyone. This is game. Um, like, they can. Shad doesn't have boots. He has no way to get away from this. He is the slowest person in the game at the minute. With that time dilation, he has no. Well, he does have a buyback. But he has no team. And everybody, look 2.8k health, 2.9k health, 3.87k health, 4.3k health. It's at least going to be Magus. Fortification is going to be used, now. but I don't know how long they could last. I don't know if they can last the 24 seconds. That's Megas. Okay. Uh, Namaga are going to respect Viking GG here, even though they do have the the Megas. They're just going to back themselves up. The maybe you want to wait for Ultimates to come up, because Chronosphere is up in only a few. And if they get another fight, I mean, you, you've got to look at the buybacks. Nobody 
Oh no, uh, Witch Doctor. I was going to say, everybody on Nemuga does have buybacks, but Witch Doctor doesn't for the next two and a half minutes. Uh, Winter Wyvern as well. But there is still three buybacks available. Faceless. Highest level in the game, along with the Bristle back here now as well. Bristle. Well, Faceless is closer to level 30, but Bristle's not that far behind. <laughs> They're just going to wait on Astral, and Astral. He's got the Boots of Travel, he's got Blink Daggers, he's got Shadow Blade. Probably doesn't want to use the Shadow Blade. Blink Dagger, I guess, wouldn't be too bad to use once more. But maybe just, just save it. 395 move speed gets him down the lane pretty darn quick. Toby, he's not to know that nobody's out here. But that is a huge risk, mate. Coming out this far. Roshan's up. They're going to go for it. And this is an Ag Scepter. You probably give over to the Bristleback. Uh, maybe the Witch Doctor. Who got it? Faceless took it. I guess, sure. I would have thought the minus armor would have been nice, even the, the bouncing death ward, but you know, faceless void is a carry, he deserves everything. That's the way Dota works, right? Are they going to come in? Reveal Chronosphere though, who was that on? It's going to be on to boom. Necrophos has no buyback, 400 and 400? 4 minutes 30 seconds before it's back up. Aramis, he instantly has to buy back now as well. Boom, he's been spirit vesseled up. The Echo Slam comes through the four staff now as well. Boom, is he going to try and survive through this? The Reaper side so going to bounce, but it doesn't really do any damage at all. And Aramis has already bought back. This might be a dieback. The buybacks come through from everybody on the side of uh, Nemiga now as well. Toby going to be locked down. He bought back. He died back. Look at this. They're just going to die. Fountain. Rampage comes out. And Lycan just had to run away. There was literally nothing he could do. 55 minutes and 7 seconds. Nemiga, it looked really good for Viking in the early game. They were taking control of the board. But once the Bristleback stopped feeding and actually came back online, he just... They ran over Viking. Um, and I don't know whether it's just an off day for them, but Viking... Not looking too great today. They did push the first best of three to all three games. And that's something they've got to hope to do here. But Nemiga, 39 to 39. It's not even the fights that Nemiga were taking because you, you've got to look like both kills are even. Like both uh, fights kill worth death. death. Yeah, both teams have the, the same amount of kills. But Nemiga just kind of closed that map out. Viking found it harder to farm. Nemiga took objectives and made it real hard for Viking to play around. So... 55 minutes in and they were able to take that game and again guys we, we, We've been going since 12 o'clock for the past eight hours. My voice is starting to pack in We're gonna go as long as possible, but I mean obviously we're gonna finish these last two games, but If I get a little bit croaky forgive me It's just it's a day of Dota So we'll take a break. We'll be back with game number two right after this